Is the DCEU cursed? Well, at first glance, it certainly would seem so, wouldn't it? Now, granted, there's a lot of things that's not because of any curse or whatnot. It's things that could have easily been avoided, most notably not panicking and not meeting your projections when you're you, when you're just starting with Man of Steel and so forth. But they did. They panicked, and 11th hour changes, and then that ultimately culminates with the whole Zack Snyder Justice League mess, which was completely and under, utterly unnecessary. Could have just completed that, uh, released his director's cut on Blu-ray, and be done, and you'd, you'd be fine. But that's not what they did. And then there were problems that are beyond their control. Ben Affleck was having all kind of personal problems, struggling with alcoholism. His marriage was falling apart, and he just was not in a good place to continue on with something like Batman. Now, uh, a break or whatnot to get his act together. Could he have continued on? Perhaps. But this might have been something that was unavoidable that they have to recast Batman somewhere in between there, provided it was still ongoing. Whether Zack Snyder was still involved completely or just as a producer or not, whatever. But had they just stayed the course of what was established, which they could have done, um, then, yeah, they could have worked it out uh, that way. The other problem, of course, well, it's not... <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, avoidable things, like stupid stumbles. Of, um, you know, uh, Ray Fisher uh, accusing everybody of racism when initially his initial complaints were spot on and legitimate about Joss Whedon and his assholery and all that sort of thing. But, you know, the then Hamada's uh, racist, who had nothing to do with Joss Whedon being in the, on the movie and everything. Uh, that was before his time at taking over the DC films and all that. But nevertheless, he didn't get his way, so he just starts lashing out and burning every bridge he had in his very brief and short career. Um, did it to himself. Zack Snyder screws up with all the, right on the eve of the his Snyder Cut being released on HBO Max and uh, just smears geeks and gamers right when they're raising a lot of money for the charity that he passionately believes in. Just stupid all around. And still, to this day, as far as I know, has not made any amends on that. Um, which is pretty rotten. And I, I defended him a lot, up to the, but that I can't. You know, uh, Would I like to see what would become of his stories? Sure. But that's always going to be a stickler there. And at this point, would I care if someone else took it over because he was just the producer and they carried it out? No, I wouldn't. That might be for the best. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Ray Fisher, Zack Snyder. Um, uh, then Amber Heard. Yes, Amber Heard. And this is one of those, uh, why was she chosen? Was it really Zack Snyder who chose her? Or, you know, was this just one you had to have or whatever? I don't know. But uh, she gets the role of Mara. And for the most part, uh, the Aquaman movie that we eventually get Um which made the billion dollars. That's what they wanted. They kept panicking when they didn't, and they would try to shuffle the deck chairs at the 11th hour, and that's what led to all the screw-ups. Um, somehow Wonder Woman managed to remain untouched, the first one, you know, <laughs> and made a very, very good superhero film. Um, but Amber Heard, of course, we now know, is uh, absolutely nuts and uh, abused the Me Too movement for her own uh, uh, you know, uh, benefit and uh, smeared Johnny Depp, which then brought in both Warner Brothers and Disney and joining in destroying this man and all this stuff and wrecking his career based on nothing. Um, and then all the evidence was in the, was the opposite was true. And so she loses the case. And so now they've got their billion dollar uh, golden boy Aquaman, but the sequel has her in it. So now it's like, now what do you do? So how much of this was avoidable? Well, uh, picking sides in it should have been, but to immediately do that just because of the trend of the moment uh, scared them into siding with Amber when everyone knew because Armada comes in and testifies. Yeah, she was terrible. Uh, in the role, they had to do some clever editing to make it look good, which they succeeded for the most part. Um, that's like you immediately, did, yeah, I want to recast her, but no, oh, got to keep her, you know, consistency or whatever. I don't know. And so they were stuck with that. But uh, 
she literally pooped the bed and they're stuck with it. <laughs> so it's like, oh, damn it. You know, well, we got other movies. Yeah, we sure do. We sure do. Well, right after, you know, the Suicide Squad uh, failed because it got messed with, too. There's another cut on that one, too. Maybe we'll see it. Hopefully. I don't see why not. What the hell? I is it better? I don't know. The initial idea that Ayer talked about doing, he's already admitted they didn't get to shoot, sounded really cool. But since they didn't do it, I don't know what this other cut would be. There's other stuff in it. It's longer and all that. Uh, so it would be interesting to see it. But the movie as it is, is not very good. So... Will Smith was talking about interest in re reprising the role of Deadshot. Oh, yeah, well, he's this bankable star. Everybody loves Will Smith. That might be something you want to look at. Whoops. Uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> so whatever's going on with that marriage and all the stories, you know. And, but there he is slapping Chris Rock. And apparently everybody in Hollywood turned on him. So now, so there's another cast member. Who would have thought that, you know? But, um... There it was. And so now Warner Brothers, oh, damn it. If they had any plans to do that or not, if he would return. It's looking like with the James Gunn Suicide Squad that the part Idris Elba did is basically just dead shot all over again. Even to the point of him having a daughter and it's all for the daughter and everything. It's very, it's the same character. So I don't know why they didn't just say cast him as the new dead shot, you know, but well, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, at least the character he was playing was originally a uh, black. So there's that. How about that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it was going to go with Deadshot being in the movie. But for whatever reason, Will Smith didn't want to at the time. But then, then later thought, ah, maybe I should have held on to that and have a superhero franchise under my belt. But now, I, you know, he's just going to have to look for small movies and stuff to try to make a comeback. So, yeah, that was that. Uh, so that's too bad. So let's see. Well, they had another movie that they had long been struggling with, trying to figure out what to do because of all the, the stumbles and clumsy stuff they did and stupidity with birds of prey and crap like that. Um, they uh, they said, oh, man, uh, we got to do this reboot movie that resets the universe and so we can move forward and just they, we're basically starting over, but we'll keep stuff that, that, that worked and, and get rid of the stuff that didn't and all that. So, uh, hey, let's adapt that Flashpoint story that the DC Comics did, which was an interesting story and all. Then they did the New 52, which quickly fizzled because it was obvious they didn't really have any ideas of what to do with that. So, but anyway, they were going to do it, and uh, back and forth, forth and back, years and years and years, and finally they get it and shoot it, and they come up with this idea, hey, you know what would be the big draw? Uh, getting Michael Keaton back as Batman. We'll have uh, Ben Affleck do his final performance as Batman, and we'll we'll you know time warp the universe and all this cool stuff. We're gonna introduce a new Supergirl, and then a spinoff of this will be a Batgirl movie. Oh man, the sky's the limit. Oh wait, it's a, it's a Flash movie. Who's playing the Flash? Oh, that's right, Ezra Miller, which nobody really liked in the role. <laughs> what the hell was that? Why was he chosen? I don't know. You know, somebody owed a favor or something. Who knows? But uh, I'm they, they, apparently they were going for that he would be the comic relief of the Justice League. You know, of the actors that have played the Flash, he is obviously the least one. None of them have really been all that close to the comic book version, but then they've changed the comic book character of Flash quite a bit. And then Wally West took over for a long time because Barry Allen was dead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that one was more of the comedic character, so I guess they kind of merged the two. I don't know. Anyway, so so you you, you dead somebody. That's why you bring in stuff like Michael Keaton. Hey, Michael Keaton's coming back. Oh, that's interesting. And, and it is. It's kind of a cool thing. And uh, we'll do the multiverse thing. Of course, Marvel managed to beat them to it, even though DC Comics really was the, 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 the pioneer in multiverse stories in comic books, but well, once again, you, you got scooped by Marvel, which is always the case, no matter what. So anyway, uh, so they finally get the film. According to screen test, people seem, think it's not bad. It's kind of cool. It's a kind of back to the future type stuff, and it, it's cool. So, okay, well, <laughs> turns out Ezra Miller's has deep-rooted uh, mental issues, um, which was apparent 
to people on the set, and, and even before that, some of the interviews he would do, and I said, is this guy high or something? You know, I you know it was beyond just his. I'm the goofy, crazy guy. Uh, it was way beyond that, and it, now it's gotten down into very, very dark territory. And as I'm taping this, nobody knows where he is, and uh, this could end in the most hor horrible way possible. Or perhaps he gets found and he can go into rehab or something like that. But it devolved down at, down into involving uh, you know stuff in, uh, you know underage girls and this sort of thing. Um, and so here you are. Uh, this is part you know you should have recast this guy when you knew there was problems with him, but nobody did, and he was protected by the people at Warner Brothers. Zasloff comes in. He's the big boss now. Stuck with this. He, he's got to be hitting the roof angry uh, over over all of this. And uh, they're stuck with this idea of this $200 million movie. That's not just a movie. Uh, again, this is another Batman versus Superman deal where this is supposed to reset the whole DCEU. So you can't just toss it aside and all that sort of thing or just never release it because their other movies are, are affected by the results of this one. So, <laughs> so oh yeah, you can recast them and odds are that that's exactly what they'll do. The word is now that's that's the deal. I, after, whatever this movie does, doesn't matter. He will never be the Flash again. Uh, but how much is it logistically possible to go ahead and redo the shooting scenes of uh, Ezra's parts in there with someone else? And uh, it, it, it's been done in other movies, but not to this extent. So it seems unlikely, but, you know, maybe someone can do it. Maybe they can. I, you know, I just don't understand that. Maybe they can, but seems unlikely but in any case it's just this huge mess and easily the worst of the batch amber's pretty bad but this is the worst of the batch uh, ray fisher stuff is just stupid but uh <laughs> under a new regime they maybe they won't care that he did all that to other i doubt it but he's the only one that could possibly come back to the team but what they really need to do now uh, well, whatever decision they make with The Flash, uh, put it on HBO Max, something like that. Fine, whatever. But uh, they need to get the ball rolling. Hopefully they've already done this, is get a goddamn Superman movie going and get Henry Cavill back into those tights and do a Superman, preferably a Superman versus Brainiac story. Just get that going and, and get a Batman for your shared universe. If Ben Affleck doesn't want to do it, then you need to get uh, Robert Pattinson. You're just going to have to be the Batman of shared universe. If Matt Reeves doesn't like, like it, he knows where the door is. And that's what you do. And you reorganize that that way. But right now, get Superman uh, going uh, as soon as you can. Fast track that. And, uh, and a lot of this stuff can just be forgotten. And, and and the real Superman, who's a type of personality and heroic character, the world could really use right now. <laughs> you know? And uh, that's uh, the thinking that should be going forward uh, on that. And hopefully uh, it, it, it is. Uh, now that uh, apparently have parted company, company with Bad Robot, which was yet another mistake done with this whole DC Films thing of letting uh, that craptastic operation get their hands on it and sit on a character like Superman so no one else, any other pitches that had, no matter who they were, you know, Macquarie and whatnot, pitching ideas for a Superman film, ah, no, 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 saving it for the great J.J. Abrams who did nothing except, you know, hire a racist to write a script about a race-swapped Superman or some such. Who knows? doesn't matter it, it, it just no you, you you need actual superman and uh, if you want to do something with your supergirl 
uh, have them cross over so, and Superman can, you know, and meet his cousin and th that story, you know, and set that up. And then you got another trilogy for that character, maybe. But th that's what you can do um, and stop playing around with idiot notions and, 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 and scams like Bad Robot and the like. And uh, get that going. Get your Superman and Batman and get somebody who can write a good script for Wonder Woman. Keep Gal Gadot there. You can even have Patty direct it. She can direct. Just don't think she can write. And um, there you go. And, and no more weird idiot stories. Uh, well, never mind. Uh, we, let's just forget about Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> but there we are. Uh, so is it cursed? Well, not really, because just about all of this was avoidable. And uh, maybe, just maybe, they didn't know just how dark the situation with Ezra was, but you knew it was troublesome, and you 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 needed to move on with with someone else. Uh, hey, it's a tough thing, but uh, there you are, and uh, the same is true for all the characters, really, uh, because this is a shared universe entity. Uh, that should be kicking Marvel's butt right now because Marvel's best years are behind them. It certainly looks that way. Maybe they can fix a comeback, but right now would be the time for DC to trounce. And once again, DC is just so damn good at snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. So that appears to be the case so far. But if they would just get their act together, it could change. Uh, so... Uh, curse, not really. Uh, a lot of this stuff could have been avoided. It just wasn't uh, because it was mismanagement. So hopefully Zaslov uh, has a, a better handle on this sort of stuff. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. Uh, quite a few more headaches will come. And uh, hopefully the Ezra Miller story is pretty much complete at this moment and he just gets help and uh, whatever legal troubles happen they'll have to deal with that too and if he deserves some punishment he gets that as well um but that's it uh, you got to recast that role and uh sounds like that's exactly what they're going to do so uh, all you can say is uh good luck dceu and uh hopefully a lot of people in the right positions learn the lessons of this bizarre clumsy story <laughs>